So welcome to College Algebra. Today's what, the seventh? Yeah. Okay, so last time when we left, uh, we were talking about, we had just brought up this concept of natural domain. Okay, so then let's recall what that is. So the natural domain of an expression is the set of all inputs for which the expression is defined. Okay, so by way of example, so how about 3x plus uh, 7 divided by x minus 8. So what is the natural domain? There's negative infinity to 8 non-inclusive, non 8 non-inclusive to infinity. Okay, so I'm going to say this a little bit plainer. Yeah, anything but 8, right? You could plug in 8.1, that'd be fine. Uh, you could plug in 10. But why not 8? Do we've got, we have something against 8s? Yes? Because if you did 8 minus 8, the denominator would be 0. Right. Right. Division by 0 is, is not defined. So then, uh, any other x, if you were to plug it into this expression, it, it gives a definite number. For example, you could plug in 10. The numerator would be 37. The denominator would be 2. And while 37 over 2 may not be your favorite number, it is a number, and there's nothing wrong with it. So the answer is any x except uh, x is equal to 8. Okay, something slightly more interesting, just barely. Uh, how about if I change it to something like 2x minus uh, 9 divided by x squared plus 11x um, plus 24. Now you have to factor it. Right. So the same instruction as before, find the natural domain. Okay, so this question is slightly more complicated than the previous one. The previous one was obvious that you can't plug in 8. Okay, because in the previous one, that, that's, that obviously causes division by 0. So now we want to make... We want to make this one more obvious, and yes, the strategy is to factor the denominator. If you were to do that, so 2x minus 9, factoring the denominator is pretty easy because the denominator is a quadratic, and better than that, it's monic. What does that mean, to be monic? The, the leading coefficient is 1. Okay. So that means that we just do that simple trick. right? We want two numbers whose product is 24 and whose sum is 11. Can you think of two? Very good. Uh, so x plus 8, x plus 3. So now what numbers can we not allow? Negative 8 and negative 3. Negative 8 and negative 3. So now the answer is something is any x except x is negative 8 
x is negative 3. Okay, so you could, you could plug in anything else, right? You could plug in negative 3.01. That'd be fine. So now, this statement, this statement right here, this is a bit clumsy. So what we want is we want a, a, a more precise and less clumsy way to say this. Okay, so then we're going we're gonna to pause considering uh, computing the natural domain for a minute, and we're going to consider how, what's, the, what's a more efficient way to say this. Okay, so any questions about this page? Okay, so then to make that happen, we need to define intervals. So the first definition. So here is a, here is a set. The set of all x such that a is less or equal to x is less or equal to b. So this notation is called set builder notation. And the state of Texas assures me that you're already familiar with it. <laughs> But just to remind you, the, these curly parentheses, their proper name is braces, and they denote the beginning and the end of a set. The vertical bar means such that. So what this means is this is a set containing x values such that the following clause is true. So just everything between a and b. An example would be something like this. So can someone tell me a number that's in this set? Five is in there. How about pi? Is pi in there? Yes. Eight. Eight is in there. What about, can someone tell me a number that's not in here? Negative two is not in there. Nine is not in there. 8.1, not in there. Good. Okay, so everybody okay with this? So this notation is referred to as set notation. So such sets are called intervals because it's everything between two points. Everything between three and eight. That's an interval. Okay, but this is a little bit wordy notation. So here is another common notation. So that means the same thing as this one. A to B. Now, these square parentheses are called brackets, and it is necessary for you to use bra brackets in this case. The, so formerly, when we, when we were doing arithmetic, I switched between parentheses and brackets, round parentheses and square parentheses, and the switch was not significant. But here, it is significant for a reason you'll see in just a moment. Okay. Uh, this is called interval notation. Okay, and then you could plot it in this way. So a closed dot connecting to another closed dot, A, B. And this is a piece of the real line. So the real line, the way you plot it, you know, it continues going that way and the other way. So this is, this is the piece of the real line that is between A and B. It includes A and it also includes B. So this is called a plot. All three of these mean exactly the same thing. Which one is most useful depends on the context. Okay, here's another one. Set of all x such that a less than x 
less than or equal b. How is this different than the set in part one? Does not include a. Does not include a. So the distinction is that this is less or equal on the top, and this one is just less than. So the way that this is denoted in interval notation is with a round parentheses at A and square parentheses at B. So this notation means, this one means we're not going to include A and we are going to include B. So that's why I said the shape of the parentheses is significant. The plot in this case looks like this. A to B. Any question about this? So we could also do this one. So x, set of all x such that a less or equal to x less than b. So how will this one, do, how do you suspect this one will be denoted? Bracket on a. And to be round parentheses. Just parentheses, right? Round parentheses is redundant. <laughs> but I say that because most people can't remember what bracket means. Okay, so then A to B. Okay, so among these, we have three, three intervals. Who's missing? Right, where, where uh, both endpoints are missing. So the set of all x such that a is less than x is less than b, a to b, a to b. <clears throat> okay, so now there's a little bit of language that goes with these. So <clears throat> this interval, an interval where both ends are present, this kind is said to be closed. So it's said to be closed. This kind where neither endpoint is present, what do you suspect this one is called? Open. And what about in these cases where it's one and one? Yeah, they're called half open or half closed. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was, I was hoping someone would do that. like us if the world determined say if A was open and B was closed that we called that half open and if A was closed and B was open we called that half closed and just specified one or the other so that so that these don't have the same name yes yeah it'd be nice so you could say I mean you can just have to be more specific you can say open at A closed at B So the going going through this, you know, if, if you really like coming up with a name for everything, a meaningful name, and and then reckoning about it, you know, maybe consider taking some more math classes. So so uh, an example. So so math math is just filled with trying to come up with the right name for something, and and then jokes with, <laughs> with respect to the name. So uh, an example would be there's a course called Real Analysis that all undergraduates have to take. And you know, they, they get used to reckoning in, in terms of these sets as being open or closed or whatever. 
And it, because of the notation, because of the language, many students falsely believe that every set must be either open or closed. And so the joke is that, in real analysis, is that sets aren't doors. Okay? They, th if they're not open, that doesn't mean they're closed. If they're not closed, that doesn't mean they're open. They can be both open and closed for that matter, or neither. So sets aren't doors. <laughs> <laughs> and then, to make it more complicated, you go far enough in math, you start considering further spaces where sets can be, where all sets must be open or closed, and those are called door spaces. <laughs> that's, that's terrible. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, uh, good. Let's have an example. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Mm so let let A be the set. Um, how about uh, negative three to twenty, and let B be the set. Uh, negative 10 to 7, say. So we've got two sets, two intervals. But remember that an interval is just a set. So there's, t there's two operations on sets that you have to be, have been familiar with before you get here. Union and intersection. Okay. So Question one, please compute the inter intersection of A and B. So can someone in plain language tell me what intersection of sets means? It's where they open. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't, you can't, it is what it is, right? The first rule of tautology club is the first rule of tautology club. Yes? If, like, if A was a, if A and B are a Venn diagram. Uh -huh. A, a and also B at the same time, right? So, so to be in the intersection means that you are, you must be in set A, and also you must be in set B. So you're in both. So we want to know what x values are in this interval, and also that interval. So <clears throat> intersection means. <clears throat> x's in set A and also in set B. So some of you are just able to think about it for a minute and get it figured out. That's great. Okay. Uh, however, it can be quite useful to be able to draw a picture and reason about it. So I'm going to draw set A. So set A, negative 3 to 20. So I'm going to draw a number line for it. Okay, And then set B, well, that's negative 10 to 7. I'm going to draw a number line for it also. Okay, so now I'm going to draw set A on the top number line, and I'm going to draw set B on the bottom number line. So now consider, <coughs> consider uh, these four numbers, negative 3, 20, uh, negative 10, and 7. Which one is furthest, which one is most negative and, fur and therefore furthest to the left? Negative 10, negative 10 is furthest to the left. Okay, so... I'm going to draw a point here at negative 10. So that's negative 10. Okay, why did I draw it clo closed point? Yeah, because it's included in set B. Okay, so now there's four numbers, one, two, three, four, one down, three to go. 
Of the remaining numbers, negative 3, 20, and 7, which one is furthest to the left? Negative 3 is furthest to the left. Do I need to draw it open or closed? Closed, right? So then, and I'm going to draw it up here. So this is negative 3. Okay. Now, 2 down, 2 to go. Of the points 20 and 7, which is furthest to the left? 7 is furthest to the left. Do I draw it open or closed? Open, if that's just because we're tired of filling in dots. Right, because it, this is saying that it's open. Okay. 7. And of the remaining point, 20, which one is furthest to the left? 20. And is it open or closed? It's closed. Closed. Okay, so then set A is this interval. Okay. And set B is this interval. So now what we want is we want all points that are in both intervals. All points that are in both intervals. With this picture, I think it's probably more clear. Okay, but to make it as clear as I possibly can, okay, we're going to do it like this. So let's say that I'm back here like at negative 12. Is negative 12 in the intersection? No, no right? So to be in the intersection, I need a, a red point and also a green point. So, so you tell me when, when I start to get in the intersection. Do, 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 do. Oh, am I in the intersection? No. But I have a green point. Ah, we have to have both, right? So, do, 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 do. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, do we have a red and also a green point? Yes. So, where does this begin? At negative three. So, that means that the answer to the question... A intersect B begins at negative 3. And is it open or closed? Closed. Closed. OK. So then to negative 3. So now I need to know when, when, how, for how long do I have a red and also a green point? So do, 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 do. Ah. <laughs> OK. So then we stop here at this point. And so does everybody see that this is, this is where we no longer have a red and also a green point? So, so that means that we stop at 7. And is it supposed to be open or closed? Open. Open, but we have a red point. But, right, but we do not also have a green point. So open. Any question about this one? OK, so 2, A, union, B. Okay. So in plain language, can someone tell me what union means? Yes? Very good. So now, to, to, to make it in colors, if you like, since, since I use colors, this means that we're going, we want the set of all points that are either red or green or both. Okay. So then this is X's in set A or in set B. And I don't need to write this next part, but I'm going to, or both. The reason has to do with when a mathematician says or, they mean disjunction. So that, that, that means that this, this part is implied, or both. 
However, in, in, in spoken language, or sometimes means exclusive or, which means that you can go to the store or you can go to Six Flags, right? Which means that usually if, <laughs> if you say that, that means that you can't do both. <laughs> okay, but in math, or means or both. Okay, so then now, probably pretty easy. I suspect now that we have the drawing, so I'll do the I'll do the Jeopardy thing again. Okay, so <laughs> one last time. Okay, so then back here when I'm back here at negative a million, am, are we in the union? No, no. no, right? So then do 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 do. Okay, so we've started to get a green point. So does everyone agree that the union begins here? Okay, so A union B. Begins at negative 10. Do we include negative 10? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then we're in the union because we have a green point. So do, 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 do. Oh, something happened. Now, now we also have a red point. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So do, 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 do. Oh, we lost the green. Green's gone. Oh, we can continue. So, do, 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 do. Okay. So, does everyone see that's the last place we will have a red or a green point? And we include 20. Good. Any question about this? <clears throat> okay, it gets more interesting. It can be more interesting when there's more sets, like if there's, say, five intervals involved. So most people, once you've done it enough, most people can do it just in their head without a picture for two intervals. But if I gave you five intervals and I said, find the intersection of all these, then usually it requires a picture <laughs> to get it done. Good. <clears throat> So, now besides that, we also have other kinds of intervals, so definition. These are called infinite intervals. So, before I, uh, before I get any further, I want to make the following important remark, and that is the symbol, symbol, infinite, okay, this symbol, the infinity symbol, is not a number. So it's not a real number. It's not in that set. Uh, however, <coughs> x is less than infinity for all x. In the reals. So that is to say that the, the expression, the symbol infinity, is not a number. However, it is a true statement that every real number is less than infinity. Okay, similarly, negative infinity is not a number. However, every real is greater than negative infinity. Okay, that being the case now, we can consider the following. <clears throat> the set of all x such that, um, say, uh, x is less than a, or less than b. We'll do it like that. Okay. So notice that in comparison, in comparison to the previous page, it's like this x was between two things for this one, uh, but this one x is sort of not not between two things. Okay, uh, it's just got something to its right. But if if you would like to reckon it as being between two things, we can reckon it as being between two things. 
So on the one hand, x must be to the left of b, but it also must be to the right of what? Negative, Negative infinite. So you could write this in this way. Okay, so then how do you write this, this in interval notation? Mm hmm Pretty good. So the set of all numbers between negative infinity and b. And then as a plot, the way this is drawn is like this. So it goes all the way to the left. You can draw an arrow if you want to be really clear. It goes all the way to the left. Okay. Yes? You could. There'd be nothing wrong with that. So I think what you're asking is saying something like this. No problem. Uh, two. Another thing we could do is how about this? Instead of all x such that negative infinity is less than x is less or equal to b. So how is this the different, different and the same as the previous one? Right, now it's closed at b. So negative infinity to b. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I think your question is, is why, why is this one not a square bracket? Uh -huh. Okay. So, I'm going to address that in just a moment. But for, um, so, now, this is, this is, in a sense, everything to the left of B. Right? Either including B or not. Do you also observe that we, I could do the ones on the right? So, I'm going to just not do those, and you can use your imagination. Okay, uh, there's also this one, set of all x such that negative infinity is less than x, uh, x, <laughs> I wrote infinity, is less than infinity. So what is this one? X in real. Yeah, this is it, this is anything at all. <laughs> Okay, so that means any, any x will do. So to your question of, of this kind of thing. So infinity is not in the reals. So not in the reals. And these are intervals of real numbers. So as a result of infinity not being in the reals, It is therefore always incorrect to write this. That is always incorrect. Why is that always incorrect? Yes, these are these are subsets of the real numbers, intervals of real numbers. So this is always wrong. Because this statement is meaningless, but if it, if, it, if it meant anything, it would have to mean that you're including infinity in the interval. So to, make it, to, to bring it sort of into the common realm, you, it would be something like, if you were going to the grocery store and you selected for yourself a bag of oranges, and then you looked in it and found a potato. Now that's, that's not going to work, right? <laughs> infinity can't be can't be in there. It's not a it's not a real number. Good. So, any question about this? Okay. So, to go back to the first page. Any x except 
say, 5. So this is sort of a clumsy statement. Any x except 5. I want you to now give it to me in a pl as, a, uh, in, as a plot. And I also want you to give it to me in interval notation. So as a plot, it's like, it's like you took the whole line, and then someone came by and stole five, right? deleted five, vandalized the line there. OK, so anything except five. OK, how do you write this in interval notation? So to get it to get it right, you're going to have to use the union symbol, because th this is the union of two intervals. It's this it's this left interval. So what is the interval on the left? Ne negative infinity to five. Do we include five? No. No. And then union what? Five to infinity. Any question about this one? You, you could. There'd be nothing wrong with that. But I typically don't write the arrow. That has to do with. So even this arrow being here really kind of irks me. Like I'm a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> emotionally to see that arrow there uh, for reasons that um, aren't relevant to this class. But if you go far enough in calculus, then you, you worry about something called orientation. And uh, the re my, my concern, for those, for those of you only that are interested, interested is that I'll, I usually only draw the arrows in the direction that is positive, that's increasing. Drawing an arrow that's pointing in the negative direction kind of makes me feel icky. pretty worried about <laughs> yeah, good one. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so how about this one? Uh, also on the previous, on the first page, we wrote something like this. Any x except negative 2 or negative 8. It's probably not this exactly, but we wrote something like this. So I want you to... I want you to give this to me as a plot and also in interval notation. Okay, so now, now that you may have written something down, I'm going to warn you that I primed you to make an error, a very specific error. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to answer it. So if this is what you've written, then you're wrong.
So this will be need to be the union of three intervals. And if you wrote this, then you are incorrect. Yes? Isn't the negative 8 further to the left? Yes. Okay, negative 8 is to the left of negative 2. OK. So the, the way that I primed you to make this error is I wrote negative 2 first, and then negative 8. OK, so you need to pay close attention to that kind of thing. It's especially frustrating when you're attempting to type something like that into the online homework and you're typing it and pressing enter so many times. No, it's right, this machine is broken. So does everyone see that these are in the wrong order? If negative two and negative eight aren't in blue, why is it a union? It's the union of this, this interval and, well, first, in the first place this is wrong. So let me, let me just say not this. And now let me write the correct answer. So do you agree with this? Okay, so then it's, it's all of the real line, except we've deleted eight, ne negative eight, and also negative two. Okay, so then this is three intervals. Everything to the left of negative eight, everything between negative eight and negative two, and everything to the right of negative two. So those intervals are respectively negative infinity to negative eight, negative 8 to negative 2, and negative 2 to infinity. So how do we denote that we're talking about all the things that are in this one, or in that one, or in that one? Union. Union means or. Does that answer it? Okay. Last question. So now, how about x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 4x plus 3? So two parts. Please find the natural domain. And then please simplify by cancellation. if possible. So how about it? How do we answer this question? Factor the denominator. So for part one, we need to factor the denominator. Does the denominator factor easily? Yes. Yeah. So how about x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 1? So what does that mean? What points are simply not allowed? Negative 3 and negative 1. And of those, which is furthest to the left? Negative 3. So the answer is negative infinity to negative 3 union negative 3 to negative 1 union negative 1 to infinity. Okay, and then instruction 2, simplify by cancellation. What does this mean? Ah, so you're telling me that the numerator also can be factored? How does it factor? Very good. Either because you're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 9 and whose sum is 0, or because you recognize that this is the difference of squares which factors into what? Well, yes, but the, fra the, the phrase is that the difference of squares factors into what? Um, the uh, product of conjugates. Product of conjugates, very good. So the, so the x plus threes cancel, and this is what remains. Okay, yes? Why would you not simplify first? 
So, the que so it's an important question. I need just 10 seconds. This expression right here. Look, so, look, so directly to you. So this expression right here, what is its natural domain? All x is except for negative 1. Is that the same as the natural domain of the expression that I asked about? No. That's why you have to consider natural domain before any cancellation. Okay. Have a nice Wednesday.